Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how we can track events using Slider Revolution and how we can link that through to a Google Analytics account. Now before we start you need to make sure you've already got a Google Analytics account otherwise if you don't you're going to need to go and set one of those up. Don't worry you can set the free one up you don't need to go away for anything that's going to cost you any money. So once you've got that set up we're ready to move on then to start adding this information into our sliders. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and created a simple slide that just has some text and a button. Now we're not limited to tracking button clicks, we can actually track the slides themselves. So we may want to go through and set up slide clicks as opposed to setting up button clicks. You don't always want to have a button visible on a slider, but you still might want to make it interactive and you may want to track those clicks. So I'm going to show you both methods. First of all, we'll start off with the button and then we'll take a look at how we can do exactly the same thing just by using the actual slide and setting that as a link itself. So the first thing we need to do is just select the item or the object on our page that we want to be tracked. So for this example, we're going to use the button. So we'll click on that to make sure that's selected. Then we're going to come up to the attributes section at the top. And in there, we're going to click. And you can see we now have a range of different things that we can do. What we are interested in is the classes section. And all we need to do is click in classes and put GA button. That now sets up as a Google Analytics tracking. So once we set that up, that's all we really need to do. We could then do whatever we wanted to to that button. So if we want to make that clickable to do something else, we can just come up to the actions and we can apply that action to it and go through and do like we normally would, which is go through and set that up to, to click and do something. So once we've done that, we're just going to hit save. We've now applied the basic information we need in there, but we now need to go in and put some JavaScript in, some code in there that you can download and copy and paste with no alterations. So don't worry if you think it's going to get a bit complicated from this point, it's simply copy and paste. So what we need to do is jump back over to our slider, all sliders. And then what we're going to do is we're going to choose the little cog icon underneath the slider that we want to edit. So we're going to click on that. We're going to scroll right down to the bottom and in there you can see we've got custom CSS and custom JavaScript. So I'm going to put a link and the details in the description below. So all you need to do is just follow that and you can go and get the relevant code for this. All we're going to do is copy and paste this code into the JavaScript section. Okay, so this first block of code is going to allow us to track any outbound links. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste that in there and you can see that's put the code in. Make some space underneath and I'm going to do exactly the same then to track all slide changes. Once again, I'm simply going to copy and paste this underneath the first block. So there we go. There's our two blocks of JavaScript in there. We've had to do nothing other than copy and paste this information. So all I'm going to do is hit Save Changes, and that's now saved that information as part of our slider. Now, bear in mind that if you create additional sliders, then you kind of have to put this custom JavaScript in each one of those sliders. But it'll apply to every slide and every element and layer and everything else inside that slider once you've added this code in there. Hope that kind of makes sense. And that's it. That's all you need to do. That will now start sending data over to your Google Analytics account and start tracking that information for you. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over and have a look at how we can make the entire slide a clickable link or the entire slide trackable. So much the same way, we're going to leave this code in there. We're going to jump back over to our slide itself. So we're going to come back up, go to the slide editor, click on the slide that we want. Just making sure that's the active one. All we're going to do now is get rid of the, what's on this, this button. So I'm going to click on the attributes there and just take that out from there. So we'll remove that. We don't want to track that. All we need to do now is come up, making sure we've got the slide active. So this example is the first slide in our slider. If we had multiple ones. We'd have to set this for each one of them. Then we just come over to link and SEO. And we do exactly the same thing. We just put in the class insert GA dash button in there and that will then start tracking every time that slide is clicked. So we can hit save. That will now start tracking that information. And that's really it. I know it looks complicated, but it's really pretty straightforward. Once you've gone through and copied that code in, follow the steps that I've taken you through in this video and you should be good to go up to speed in being able to track either clicks on buttons or slides or the entire slide itself could be tracked. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.